What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are back on that little Red Express. If you remember from the last video, I was kind of showing you guys, got this truck in, kind of going through the engine, uh, pulled its first oil and there was like 12 quarts of pretty much Sherwin-Williams Sherwin white paint and we're back on that truck. I uh, had to kind of finish putting everything back together on that truck. So I'll kind of walk you through real quick what I did there and where we are now. What I mean by problems is we're having a few engine performance problems, meaning it doesn't want to idle right, it bogs down. Uh, running really lean, making all kinds of weird noise that I'm not supposed to be doing. But before I kind of get into that, I've got about, I don't know, 15 more seconds with you guys because by my analytics, after about 31 seconds, I lose you guys. You all fast forward. We kind of go through whatever you want to see and then you go right to the end. So before I lose you guys, I am going to plug in a little bit of merch, right? So we added some t-shirts to the website. Uh, this is basically the original logo I have. It's on the back. It's on the front. Left pocket right there. Uh, also have kind of a newer design also. Uh, same thing on the back and on the front. So if you want one of these, get on over to thevintage10customs.com. Get yourself a t-shirt. Uh, we still have hats up there. A few hats left actually, not too many. Uh, and also what else we have is, well, we have a couple koozies. So if you're like me, I want to have a drink anywhere I, I, I'm work, working in the garage. So I got to kind of have one anywhere I'm, I'm at. So we got some koozies and they're magnetized. So put them anywhere you want, kind of stick them right there by your project there. If your project's here, there, over where, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we might even have some over here. So you're over here in the toolbox. Well, you're asking, do they hold big bottles? They sure, there's a big bottle. It's heavy. It holds it just fine. Right on my toolbox. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So put them anywhere you want. Anyways, get on over to thevintage10customs.com, look at the koozies, look at the shirts, look at the hats, go over there and grab one. Oh, there's another one too. <laughs> Told you, they're everywhere, guys. All right, so the truck is all back together. Got the grill put in, got all the lights, got the uh, bumpers, hood. Uh, it's actually got some new wheels and tires for it. A brand new interior of this truck. Every part on it has, has not been looked over or has not been missed. Has not been looked over? I don't, I don't know. Basically, what I'm trying to say is every part is back on the truck. Um, all new dash, all new seat, all new carpet. Um, so putting it all back together, probably uh, not the most enjoyable content to watch. So that's why I did not put that on here. But we're having some issues. And I know the old internet world likes when there are issues, okay? So I'm having problems with what they call idle air control, okay? This has a Holly Sniper uh, EFI system put on it. It's got MSD for its timing. And I'm having a little bit of problems kind of getting that IAC, the idle air control, maintained. So I'm going to show you guys kind of how to adjust that right now because, well, you can go on holly.com and you can kind of get some support from them. Uh, but for all those nitnoid things, all your specific problems, you just got to kind of work through them. Hopefully it works. So I'll show you guys how to adjust the idle air control on this thing. Uh, I've got a loud whooshing sound. Basically, it sounds like a pro charger's on this thing. I think that's from the intake. Um, or the, the, the intake, but the EFI being too close to the intake, so we're going to add a spacer to that, and hopefully that fixes the problem. And what else do we have? Bogging down, it's running lean, so everything that shouldn't be happening with EFI systems, I'm having those problems. Uh, we could probably chalk that up to, um, well, it's a Dodge, right? But, nope, it's not. It's not. It's, it's the EFI system. Something's happening in there, whether it be the wiring is still jacked up on it. Um, it's not getting good signals. I'm not sure, but we're going to troubleshoot every one of those. So, where to begin? Let's start with go ahead and setting idle air control. Let's see if that fixes my problem. Uh, put that spacer on there, take it for a few test runs. Not sure how many I'm going to be able to record because it's pouring down outside, okay? It's been raining for the last, I don't know, four days. So we're just going to kind of test run it, I'll come back and give you a little bit of feedback and we'll kind of go from there. So just idle air control, that's what we're doing right now. All right, so idle air control is a fuel injection thing, all right? It uh, does exactly that. It is a air regulator it's it's a valve that regulates how much air is coming into the intake of the fuel injection so um what needs where we can monitor that is the key on um whoop. on the screen if you see let me see if i can set it down a little bit better okay so right here is your idle position now the truck's off 62 is way out of parameters um it's horrible so what we need to set that to, we got to get the truck running. We got to get it at uh, operating temperature, which is about 160 or higher. 
um, and we need to set that to I like anywhere from like two to seven percent. Uh, other people have different opinions on that, but I usually set mine right around two or three uh, percent. But in that two to seven is still good for really any of these bone stock motors, really any motor. But before we get started with that, and before I get it up to temperature, we need to open up the butterflies on there as if we're kind of giving it some gas. So the only way to adjust that or anything on this type of setup is there is a screw here. It's kind of similar to your carburetor. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that clockwise, which is opening those butterflies. I'm just going to give it maybe, maybe one full turn. Um, why I'm doing that is with this fuel injection system, I want to go counterclockwise to kind of get my numbers to read. If I go clockwise on it, it's going to affect my TPS, my throttle position sensor. I don't want that to happen. I want my throttle position sensor to stay zeroed out, and I want my IAC to start climbing to, I'm going to set it right around three. So to do that, we should be coming counterclockwise on it. So let me go ahead and get this started up. Um, it's not going to high idle. It's not going to go crazy. You're thinking we're turning butterflies all the way open. Suck it in a bunch of air like carburetor. No, it does not. Okay. It's going to be fine. So let me go ahead and get it started, get it up to operating temperature, and then we'll start kind of monitoring it and kind of bring that down to where we like it. All right, we got it running. We're going to go ahead and wait for it to get to 160. Um, once again, you can see here, we're going to be monitoring our throttle position. Make sure that stays at zero. That was why we turned it uh, clockwise at first. Because we don't want that to show any percentage. That has got to stay at zero. And if we go counterclockwise, that's not going to affect the TPS. Clockwise will affect the TPS. So, right now, we're showing idle air. We're going to be monitoring those two right there, zero and zero. That's got to stay at zero. We need that one you start climbing so let's give it a couple minutes we'll get it up the temperature and we'll start kind of backing down that screw to kind of get where we want it to where we want it to sit in the meantime so, i'm just gonna wait mm -hmm. still waiting Kind of smell like a burning zip tie. Well, that's what it was. It was zip tie stuck on the uh, exhaust. So we didn't fix that too. All right. So we're at about 166. Still zeroed out on here. Now we're gonna go ahead. So turning that counterclockwise and monitoring the IEC. Right. Zero is actually pretty good for the IEC, but right now. But so far, clockwise, we need that number to start counting up, at least giving us to a 2% or 3% about the glare. So, now, I'm just going to do it in like little eight turns until I start seeing that move. Once it stops moving, or once it starts moving, uh, we'll probably go smaller increments of that, kind of let the computer catch up to itself, maybe give the throttle a little bump, but... We're going to definitely take this slow. Need a longer screwdriver so I can kind of work it from the window versus going up and down, up and down. That's long enough. So you guys can monitor, and I can hit it from right there. Look at that! Boom, baby. I'm not sure why it hasn't started climbing yet. Should be moving something. There we go. Alright. We'll be one to be between the seven and nine. Let's try a little sixteenth turn. There we go. We will maintain at one. There we go.
Okay, so it's kind of looks like it's staying right around that three to five percent, which I'm very happy with on that. Um, probably set it a little bit higher, but my fans haven't kicked on yet. I know once the fans kick on, it's going to want to rev up just a little bit, and it'll probably get me back up to that six or seven ish. So we're going to leave it right there where it's at, sitting around that three to four. Maintaining pretty well. We're going to call that good on the IAC. Let's go on to the next. What's the next thing? Hmm. Ah, spacer. I'm going to put that spacer, one spacer in, hopefully get rid of this sucking noise, air jet noise, whatever you want to call it, pro charger noise that's going on right now. So let's go ahead and work on that. All right, I'm going to head out down the road under a load. Listen for the loud, almost like a pro charger sound. dives on its face under acceleration a loud almost air noise coming through it so definitely gonna have to take a look at that all right so what i'm thinking is i think this efi is a little too close to the intake i'm thinking if i put a space here and i wanted to get the uh filter off of there I think what's happening is it's sucking so much air, it's too close to the runners inside that intake, causing that whistling sound. So I wanna take this off, I wanna take the gasket first off. Uh, I did spray a bunch of brake cleaner on there. I don't have any type of vacuum leaks. Uh, it's pretty tight there. Uh, so my next thing is I wanna see if I can put a spacer in there and maybe get rid of that noise, I don't know. That's just my brain thinking it's pulling out too much air and it's going around them runners at a high rate of speed causing that whistling sound. So let me go ahead and pull this thing apart. That was hot. All right, got the uh, old EFI off and well, We've got one of these there square gaskets. I'm not a big fan of this one, especially when the bottom of these are is the four individual holes, not like so. That kind of helps a little bit with my theory as far as the air coming out, rushing through there. Um, these gaskets kind of isolate each one of those holes and kind of helps with the airflow, not kind of suck trying to suck back through um, your butterflies. So. No, no, no. That's probably one of the issues also with it, why it's making that much noise. Now, if you look at it, it does have a, we're going to call it kind of a medium rise intake. And you're thinking, well, why are we putting a spacer on there if that is kind of a high rise? Yes, it is. It is to allow the air to kind of get further down in there, suck some more and kind of cool as it's going into. Um, but what my idea, not idea, but what I'm trying to get at is if you look here where the, where, it starts going into the intake there's no gap there i need now it does have it over here i got that and it nope and on this side i want to get this the butterflies further away from this gap so in my um i don't know my small little brain i think that's kind of causing some of that noise so i've got a one inch spacer i'm gonna throw the one inch spacer on there and i'm gonna throw in the square gasket but with the round ports okay not a square gasket square hole square gasket round ports let's see if that helps it all right I'm put the extenders on so it's going to be kind of like a big mac uh, a gasket, meat, another gasket, and more meat on top. Well, maybe it's not a Big Mac because we don't have three buns, but it's a stacked idea. Okay, so gasket, spacer, gasket, 
That was definitely a bad analogy for this, okay? It does, it's not even close to a Big Mac, okay? Get off of there! Okay, see, gasket, spacer, gasket, uh, you know, EFI. Let me get the throttle position thing in my jigger thing back in here. Without it hitting on everything. All right, it looks like I got a little break in the rain. Yep, we're good. So we're gonna take a break, not a break. We are gonna take the truck out while the rain is taking a break. All right, make sure everything's still good. We still got, what is that? Good glare. Zero on the top right for throttle position, and we're sitting about mm, between five and seven. Now my fans are on, so I'm gonna say we're good right there. Okay, you guys watch back there. Make sure I don't hit nothing. And I'll back out. All right. So I'm in the gas, I'm not hearing any. Yeah, buddy, much better. No more jet engine noise. <laughs> now, it seems to not be bogging down as much either. It seems pretty responsive as far as getting into it. Heck yeah, let's keep going. Oh, it's around the gas. <laughs> All right, I am back and I am much, much happier with the way that thing test just test drove than it has been the last four or five times I've taken this thing out. Um, I know it sounds funny that maybe just adjusting the IAC and putting a little spacer, you know, did it really make a huge improvement in my opinion? Yes, 100%. It sure did make a huge improvement. So hopefully this video was able to show somebody out there how to adjust the IAC. Uh, if you have those noises, that jet engine sucking noise from the intake, that one inch space should definitely help in my situation. It may not help in your situation. I don't know because I don't know what your situation is. That is all. So I'm happy with it. Uh, I want to still go in there and make... Oh. <laughs> Tons, they're everywhere. I still want to go in there and adjust maybe the fuel parameters and maybe... Set the timing just a little bit more advanced, it just a little bit more, but whatever. That's for another day. Uh, I think you can get it a little bit better. Anyways, thanks a lot, guys, for sticking around to the end. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this out. And if you're still watching it, and we're at the end, I know, maybe half of y'all ain't even watching it. Um, go to the Vintage 10 Customs, get yourself a shirt, get yourself a hat, get yourself one of these sweet koozies.